Welcome to the June Bow Hunting 101 column here on uh, Peterson's Bow Hunting at bowhuntingmag.com. And I've got uh, Zach Fehrenbaugh with me. He's one of my employees. In the column, I was talking about the success that these guys have had hunting public land during the past few seasons. And Zach was an intern uh, two seasons ago, and he was an employee last season. So he's had uh, two years of hunting the public land here, along with several others of my employees. They have access to private land but they do enjoy the challenge and the the fun and i think a little bit of of uh just not having to worry about whether you're going to lose your spot of, of hunting the public land so i'm going to tee it up a little bit and then hand it off to zach but in the column i talked about two things the basic overall strategy of where to hunt in these public areas which public areas to hunt and then where to hunt within them and that had to do with hunting pressure primarily and then the other one was uh, the types of equipment that the guys carry that allow them to go way back into these places with the stands on their back and set up in the dark and then hunt those spots and then pull everything out and, and make their way back out again in the evening. So first, uh, Zach, tell us about how you find uh, the, the places that you're going to hunt, not only before the season, but even during the season. Like, you know, I know you guys have a lot of options. Yeah, first thing that we always do is look at maps. Uh, we try to find the furthest points away from human access points, looking for, you know, the, the deepest spots away from parking lots, any mowed paths, anywhere that's easy to access for other hunters. Finding those overlooked spots is just scouting um, parking lots. We look for tire tracks. We look for boot tracks on access trails. And that, that seemed to be the key to me when I was listening to you guys talk about it, having so many options that when you got into the season, and you found that the spot you would hope to hunt was overcrowded, you had places you could fall back on. Right, right. We always talk about having a plan B, mm -hmm. plan C. Yeah, so you don't want to get hung up on trying to hunt an individual area or an individual buck. Yep. Because there's just too many things out of your control. Too many factors. Yeah. That, yep. So the harder you work during the off season, the more success you're going to have on public land because you're just going to have more options. You're going to know where you can go to get away from people. Um, and, and that's the whole key to it. It's not really about specific deer, it's about reducing hunting pressure. Right, right. Okay. Always have the best luck where there's the least amount of hunters and that just varies and you just got to put your time in yeah. to try to figure out where those hunters are spending their time that given season. And, and you, I know you guys use kayaks a fair amount to get into places and uh, there's a lot of non-traditional access that, that you have to take advantage of like that and I know the biggest challenge, of course, is what do you do with the deer after you kill it a mile and a half in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you've worked out uh, solutions to that, too, with the, with the uh, game cards that yep. you use. Yep. But it's not a one-man job. Um, if you get a 200-pound whitetail down a mile and a half back in, and you got all those ridges and you know, ditches and stuff that you've got to cross through, uh, you're going to need some help. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not a one-man deal. <laughs> We're fortunate enough to have a pretty good group of guys to come help out every time but it would be a lot tougher if it was just one guy yeah yep good point now uh the next thing is what do you guys carry and, and you don't have to go through every little detail but let's say you're getting out of your vehicle and you're heading back in just the basics bow uh -huh. binoculars maybe a fanny pack with a grunt tube uh, some windicator maybe a snack and then a tree stand and sticks and you've had good success i know using the headlamps mm -hmm. and shining the head to to see the eyes of the deer yep and then you can wait do you wait them out or i mean i know you guys have had good success getting past deer even mm -hmm. in the dark yep and i've always in my writings and and uh in my practice done everything i could to avoid running into deer in the dark like i'll even wait until sometimes daylight in order sure. to go into places but if you're going a mile and a half back in you don't have the option of waiting for daylight when we're going that far back we are inevitably going to go through some deer and a lot of the time when we're moving quick and we're trying to get, you know, at least three quarters of the way back to our spot. We're not as worried about hunting those deer. Generally, those are the areas that are more pressured. And I think to a certain degree, you know, once we get about halfway, three quarters of the way, we will we'll really start slowing down, wait the deer out, uh, try not to blow them out of the area. But, you know, the first half of our walk, a lot of times, we're just kind of stacking them back into the area that we're planning on hunting more or less. Hmm. Uh, that's good information. and. and I'm, I'm thinking if there's anything else that would be relevant for uh, somebody that's getting into this. I guess the, the whole point is 
this can be done and then may not have the type of success that you guys have had killing the size of deer that you've mm -hmm. killed. You had an unbelievable season last year, but it's been a track record now of several years of guys in the office hunting public land and having good success. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the public land in, in Midwestern states especially gets somewhat overlooked. Oh yeah. I think there's places where the public land gets pounded. Probably the further east you go, I mean, you're from Ohio. Yep. How is the public land in Ohio? The public land in Ohio is good, but it's definitely different. There's definitely higher pressure there, but there still are mature bucks to be uh, hunted in those public land pieces. You know, don't, don't feel like you can't be bow hunting just because you don't have access to some great private land. I mean, these guys have proven that you can have good success hunting public land and have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I like the attitude that you guys bring to it. You know, the willingness to help other hunters, their willingness to help you. It's more like a fraternity. Uh, and that could be somewhat to do with this part of the country too. I think as you get further east and the competition becomes more intense, the fraternity starts to fall apart a little bit. That's very true. <laughs> that, but, that happens at least a little bit. <laughs> but, but out here, there's definitely a, a, a kinship of the public land hunters where everybody seems to be more or less in everybody else's camp. Right, um, on the same team. Yep, yep. So anyway, that's it for, uh, for this month. And I'll be back again uh, with the July installment of Boning 101 video in another month right here at boningmag.com.